Hello and welcome to Adam. Uh, specifically, this is our Adam set that you're seeing behind me. Now, I'm, I'm not sure how you got here, whether you got here through someone sending you a link or whether you found it on your own or whether you clicked an ad, but you're here and I'm genuinely excited that you are. Now, I, I guess the basic question is, what is Adam? What are you doing here? What's going on? Well, Adam is our attempt, it's our stab at getting the best, most effective training into the hands of the people who really need it, which is namely you or anybody who's made the choice that they wanna be more fit than they currently are. What we do is we get you the best quality gear, the best quality training, the best quality coaching, and everything that we can possibly do to make it the best quality into your hands. And we do that in the comfort either of your own home or of a local gym that's following the Adam program. Now, what makes what we do so effective? Well, we have a program that we have seen work so many times over and is so unique in its delivery. It requires coaching, it requires learning, it requires growing, and it requires going really, really hard. Now, the beauty of it is it's relative to your own ability. Hard is something that is going to be relative from person to person based off of what they come to us with. So no matter where you're at, whether you're really advanced in your own training, or whether this is the very first time you've ever done something like this, we have the right program for you. Built into our app, built into our community, we have different levels, all the way from level one to level four. And in that, we can meet anybody's needs. We can get you the training that you need, no matter where you're at. Our goal with this training is to make it so you can not only get any sort of physical benefits of looking a certain way or feeling a certain way, but more than that, just doing whatever you want when it comes to life. We want you to be able to live the life that you wanna live. We want you to be able to have the capacity to do whatever you want, whenever you want, for however long you want. That means if you wanna go snowboarding, you can be like, you know what, I've never done this before, I'm gonna go snowboarding. Or if you wanna be able to throw your grandkids in the air, we want you to have the capacity on both ends. Go snowboarding for the first time, throw grandkids in the air. So our training is designed to make everybody better in the way that they want to be better. So what are we doing today specifically? This is video one of the on-ramp course. And this on-ramp course is here to get you feeling confident at going through our daily training classes. So we're going to basically take three people on set through a start to finish on-ramp program, teaching them all the basics that they're going to need in order to actually feel confident to log into the app and follow the daily training. This is as authentic as we could possibly make it. All three of these people are people I had never met before, and we started by starting from the very beginning, giving them some education on what they're doing here and what's going to happen. Now, how you should follow these classes is should be, try to get them done in a week, the same week if possible. It'll help with the consistency, it'll help you kind of break up the soreness as you get sore from session to session, and it'll build some patterning in yourself to where you can stick to it and then jump on our daily program. This specific class, the way it's going to work, is you're going to learn the air squat, the front squat, and the overhead squat. The gear you're gonna need for it are some clothes that you can move around in. You don't even need shoes, but if you wanna wear shoes, that's what most people do with their feet, is put shoes on them. Uh, you can put some shoes on. In addition to that, you're gonna need a PVC pipe. Um, so if you're not a plumber, you could also use a broom handle, or you could use a mop handle, or something that is long and relatively rigid. If you were absolutely at a loss for that, you could always take a sweatshirt and use that as your PVC pipe for this. It'll work just fine holding and getting some tension there. But that's all you'll need. By the end of it, you're gonna do a little workout, which will also give you a little test that you can log in there, but more details on that in the actual video. Look for that, have some fun with it, and enjoy the session. Hello everybody, welcome to the onboarding. Uh, this is going to be where we learn some of the basic movements. We go through the start to finish of learning the foundational things that'll help us be better at following the actual sessions. And we have to start with the absolute basics, so today we're gonna start with the squatting series. We do a ton of squatting for humans. Squatting's pretty important, it's sitting down and getting back up. And these are progressive, so this is gonna be the most simple of these three. And then building upon that, we'll go into a front squat, and then building upon that, we'll go into the overhead squat. Now these common themes that we've written here, these actually happen across most of the movements that we're gonna do 
in this program period. Um, there's a couple other things that might filter in there, like active shoulders, but it wasn't as important today, so we didn't write it up. But stance, and the stance will change from movement to movement, but essentially what we're trying to do with the stance is accommodate some other points of performance. We're trying to accommodate a good quality movement, and we have to adjust our stance in order to do so. So today for the squat, we'll go over a very specific stance, um, but that will change from person to person, uh, leg length to leg length, and mobility to mobility. Weight and heels. Um, most of the movements that we do are gonna be heel driven. So you might find yourself in your toes, and that's fine, especially if you run a bunch, you wanna be in the ball of the foot and the toe. But when we're doing weightlifting movements and a lot of the stuff, especially when we're talking about squatting, we want the weight balanced about the foot with a little bit of the weight centered back around the heel so we can use a bit more of the leg. It doesn't mean we only want you in your heels, it just means that we do want the heel driving into the ground because when we start to move external load, that's gonna be pretty important. Knees tracking the toe. Um, the knee is a hinge joint. It's made to kind of do this one. It's not super made to go side to side. And where this tends to manifest improperly is allowing the knees to cave as we do stuff. So very rarely are people pushing their knees out too far, but it does happen and we'll kind of adjust that as we go. But you're gonna hear me revisit these points. We're gonna kind of learn them in this order as we go through. Next thing is full range of motion. Uh, this is actually not really a negotiable piece. And the way I, I like to uh, talk about this is like if we were playing basketball and we were like, you know, shooting some hoops and I shot it and it hit the rim and it rolled around the rim three times and then didn't go in the hoop, but it like came really close. Would you be like, that was close enough. Two points, take it. No, like you wouldn't. You'd be like, that didn't go in the hoop. And that's kind of the way range of motion works is not only is it how we make sure we hold a standard for ourselves and can compare ourselves and our own progress, but the biggest thing that full range of motion does is, as a Pilates instructor, you know that it's how the body's made to move. What we're doing with these movements and taking ourselves to the end range of our joints, ligaments, tendons, and musculature so that we have good capacity at those end ranges. If you never go there, you don't have that capacity. That's why running sometimes a little hard because it's thousands of reps of really, really short range. So when you go to do longer range, you don't quite have it. In order to have that range to sit down and get back up and put stuff overhead, we have to go to those places. Now, we might have a history of injury or life that prevents us from doing these things, but we always wanna be trying to work towards some range that's a full range. So I'll always take an easier version of the movement at a full range than a harder version of the movement at a partial range. And that's gonna be across all the movements that we do. Yeah? Sounds good. Last one is a neutral spine. Uh, the spine is the big thing that we talk about the spine is just maintaining the natural edge curvature of it. And whether we're pulling something off the ground, putting something overhead or squatting, we wanna make sure that we're not bending and flexing too much through the spine. When we're in something like yoga, or I actually don't know too much about Pilates and bracing there, but there is a certain sense of, in yoga I know of like working mobility around the spine so that way you can prevent injury. Through the stuff that we're doing here with external loads, we don't wanna be doing too much bending and flexing of the spine. We wanna be bracing the musculature around it and transmitting the force through that. So rather than bending and flexing and letting it shoot out in weird directions, we want to be bracing more than anything else. And that's what you'll see when we talk about a neutral spine through the movements that we do. Questions on any of those? Sweet. Um, let's get out to our positions that we can kind of move in. So get out, you stand in front of your A, we've got our marks, awesome. Um, we're gonna start first with just going through this exact thing. Stance, weight and heels, knees, track toe, full range of motion, neutral spine. We'll start first with the stance. In the case of the squat, the stance that we're looking for is about heels in line with our shoulders. Uh, we all have different shoulders, so that might be different from person to person. That's good, maybe a little bit wider. There we go, a little bit wider for me. Nice, and I, I tend to err on the side of a, a little too wide at first for most people. Some people need to adjust and go a little bit narrower and have more range, but I tend to err on a little wide, and we'll, we'll figure that out as you guys start moving. Next thing we're gonna do is with our toes, we wanna turn our toes slightly out. Um, for most people, this is actually a more appropriate position than a straighter footed squat. So some people at home or some people who've done Pilates or yoga before, they'll have this like narrow footed stance and they kind of squat here and stand back up. When you turn your toes out, it allows for a little bit of your femur to rotate and you can get more range there. So just make sure that we kind of adjust the toes to accommodate our own physicality. A little bit more, a little bit out. Yeah, and then as we get more mobile, as we get more comfortable in this, we can actually straighten the foot up depending on who we are. So this is our stance, so let's get out of it for a second, go back to your other stance, and then get back out to that stance, see if we get there. That's pretty good. That right foot is actually more out than the left foot, so turn, yeah, perfect, nailed it. Okay, get out of that stance, shake out your legs, get back into the stance. Awesome. 
Now, I've been doing this about 15 years, and I still have times where I unrack a weight, step back and go, wait a second, where? I don't know where I am. And like, you'll do a squat, and you'll be like, that doesn't feel right. And then you'll adjust, you go a little narrower. Do a squat, adjust, go a little wider. So there will be adjustments as you go through, also based off how sore you are, what you've done previously, <laughs> how we're feeling. But we do have this general stance, and you guys are looking pretty good through that. All right, so we've got stance. Next thing we have, weight and heels. So throughout the entirety of the squat, we have to have some version of the weight in the heels. Now what we're working towards is gonna look like this, but for right now, we're gonna try to do that, understanding, working towards that. All I want you focusing on is keeping your weight in your heels. So I don't want you thinking about anything else other than keeping your weight in your heels. When I say down, you're gonna go down. When I say up, you're gonna come up. Only thinking about weight in the heels. So what are we thinking about, Mike? Weight in the heels. Fantastic. I'm not going to ask you guys because I knew you were paying attention. I just saw his eyes wandering. That's where we were going. So yeah. when I say down, go down. When I say don't come up, just focus on weight in the heels. Ready? And down. Stay down there. It's okay. Stay down there. Yeah. And stand on back up. If you find yourself falling over backwards, that might be too much weight in the heels. So just go a little bit forward in that case. Go ahead and go down. And if you look at the bottom, I'm seeing it. And you can actually as an over-exaggeration, wiggle your toes a little bit, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm weight back in the heels. Go ahead and stand them back up. You guys are all looking pretty good in terms of weight in the heels. And uh, we could do more here, but I'm not seeing anyone shift to a weird position, so I'm happy with that. Um, we're gonna layer on top of that now. So we've got our stance, we've got our weight in our heels, and now we have the knee tracking the toe. And like I said, the knee's a hinge joint. The main thing that happens is these wanna cave in. So I want you thinking two things now. Weight in the heels and knees push out. So not one or the other, but both. So what are we thinking about, Mike? Aha, got him! <laughs> Heels on the ground. Yes. Uh, and knees press out, that was good. I'm out. glad yeah. we had that conversation because it was gonna go out the window. So the less you think about, the better off you'll be. So if you just think weight in the heels and knees out, that's what I'm looking for here. So when I say down, go down. When I say up, come up. Weight in the heels and knees out. And down. Oh, even more, even more push the knees out. Harder, harder, yes. And stand, that's better. That's what I want. Can you narrow your stance up just a little bit? For you, that was a little too wide in the stance, which you knew. I see it in your eyes. And down, push your knees out a little bit more. Harder for me, Jens. There we go, good. And stand. What's fun is like a lot of us who've never done this before when, or have driven your knees out really hard when you squat, you'll do this thing where you push your knee out and then it'll come right back. And you're like, yes, yeah, no, it's there. <laughs> and we actually want to push the knee out for a number of reasons, especially once we start loading us. It'll want to cave in. We want to turn on more glute. And we actually push the knee out, it turns on the glute. When we're passive through it and it's just over the knee, that'll work to some degree, but it will have the glute turned off a lot of the time. So let's do one or 200 more of these. When I say down, go down. When I say up, come up. Just think about pushing your knees out. Ready? And down. Yeah, and up. Now, when you stand up, also push the knee out. <laughs> so as you're standing up, you don't go, okay, now we're standing up. So as we stand up, keep driving the knees out. So we're just waiting the heels and knees out. And down, yes, and up, and down. Awesome, and up, you guys are doing great. So we've just gone over two things. <laughs> One is weight in the heels, the other is knees out. Now if you were pressing your knees out too far, it would kind of look like this, where you were like, is this what you want? And I'd be like, no, that's not what I want. So if you at home are like way up in the sides, that's not what we're looking for. If that's you, just grab the ground with your big toe and push into that. So the knee is pushed out, but the toe is grabbing the ground. That way you can create that arch in the foot and we got some good torque there. But you guys are all looking great. So now we have to layer on this next piece. What is it? Full range of motion, aha, full range of motion. So the range of motion of a squat, what, what counts for a squat is that the hip crease clearly goes below the knee. So when we're going down to the bottom, we wanna make sure the hip goes clearly below the knee. Now this is hard for a lot of us, but it's kind of essential for us to be doing. This is how we sit down and get back up. This is how we use all the musculature of the leg and the hamstring, as well as the quad. So when I say down, go down. When I say up, come up, we're gonna focus on three things. One is keeping the weight in the heels. Two is the knee being pressed out, he's writing it down. And three is going all the way down till our hip crease is below our knee. So I don't want you to sacrifice those other things. So don't all of a sudden shift to the toe, let the knees cave and like get down there. Stay back in the heel, stay the knees out, but let's see if we can go down. We'll just hang out down there till everyone's down there. This is gonna be fun for you. Ready? <laughs> and down. Nice, nice. Don't stop pushing your knees out though. Here we go, and up. 
Well, that was easy for you, and that was good, and that was great for you, too. That was a little bit more range than you were doing before, but I liked it. It looked good still. And down. Stay back in those heels, though. Don't shift forward. There we go, good. Keep driving the knees out for me, other gen. Gen two. You pushing into that? Yep. Yeah. And stand. Nice. Narrow your stance even more. I just want to just a smidge. Uh, a little bit wider. Turn your toes out a little bit more. Let's try it again. Ready? And down. Too narrow. And up. Widen the stance for me just a little. And down. Nice. And up. All right. Let's try it again. And down. And up. Nice. So something that happens to you in the bottom on occasional ones is you'll get down there and you've got such great range that all of a sudden you're like, wonk, and you shift forward to the ball of the foot. So try to stay back a little bit in that heel, just a little bit more exaggerated than you are. Ready? And down. There you go. And up. That looks terrible, Mike. No, I mean, good job is what I meant to say. Sorry, it came out wrong when I was saying it. Opposite. The opposite day, there we go. My kids play that game all the time. Then they get stuck in the loop. They're like, wait, is it? Uh, uh, no, it's not. It is, but it, ah. Anyway, here we go. And down. And up. Don't forget to drive your knees out as you stand up, too. And <laughs> down. And up. Yeah, I can see it when you do, go ahead and relax. That's different for you. I don't think you've done a ton of that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, which I may be looking a little closer there than I normally would, but you're doing great. It looks awesome. All right, so now that we've gone over these and you guys have it in your head of like, okay, I've got my stance, my weight in my heels, my knees track my toe, you've got the range, you guys are all able to get there. You guys are all probably able to get there as well. Um, it might be uncomfortable, and if it is uncomfortable, like I was doing with these guys, go a little bit wider, go a little bit narrower, adjust the feet, see what you can do about really finding that range, but while still maintaining these other points above it. So don't, don't just be like, oh, I can't get there. Change, maybe even grab a wall, work your way down there, figure out a way to get down below that parallel position, but while maintaining these other points. Now we're gonna have to layer on arguably what's the most important piece. So I teach everything else, and this is not how everybody teaches it, but I teach everything else first because this sets up our position, it sets up our foundation of like, okay, this is what we're looking for. Now what we need to do is focus on maintaining a neutral spine throughout the entirety of this movement. And this is gonna be hard for you guys at home, it's gonna be hard for you guys here, but I want you to basically fight for a better position, more than anything. And we have to not sacrifice any of these pieces. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna get out to our squatting stance, we're gonna keep our weight in our heels, we're gonna keep our knees tracking our toe, we're gonna keep that full range of motion, we're gonna put our hands out front, zombie style, and as you go down, you're gonna lift these hands up over your head. So, <laughs> not behind your head, Mike. That's, that's a fully different thing. We're gonna lift them up over the head, and what this is gonna do is as we go down, it's gonna lift our chest up. And when that lifts our chest up, it's gonna hopefully flatten out that low back. And for some of us with tighter shoulders, this might look like this. For some of us with their shoulders, we might be more upright. And some of us are gonna be pitched a little bit for, further forward, some of us be more mature and upright, but we'll, we'll see what we're working with as we go down. So don't sacrifice those other points though. Keep those other things. But now as we go down, let's lift these hands up over our head. We're gonna go nice and slow. When I say down, go down. When I say up, come up. Ready, and down, stop. Put your hands up higher, put your hands up higher, 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 higher. Push your hips back for me, Jen. There we go, drive your knees out for me, Jen. Yep, and a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, put your hands up more, put your hands up more. Knees out harder for me, Jens. Knees out harder for me, Jens. And hands up higher, hands up higher. A little bit deeper in your squat, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And up. Okay, let's try more of those. Now when you stand up, I heard what I wanted from Mike, and I, I almost heard it from home too. I wanna hear like a, this guy sucks. Like, and if that comes out, that's fine. Like, I want you working that hard for each one of these squats. That'll be really important come later with the lifting, okay? So hands out front. When I say down, go down. When I say up, come up. Let's try it. same thing. And down. Hands up more, hands up more. Nice. Sit back in your heels, sit back in your heels. Yep, and then knees out harder. Sit back in your heels. There we go. And stand. Woo! And keep driving the knees out as you stand up. <laughs> one of these days. It's gonna happen, I'm not gonna say anything, and I'm gonna be like, yes! Ready, and down. And stand, good fight. These guys are moving really well through this. I, it might not be as easy as it is for these guys, for you guys at home, but keep fighting for that range. If you can see that, you're going all the way down. 
If this is hard for you, picture that any time that you're like super comfortable, you're probably not doing it right. If you're a little uncomfortable and you're fighting your system to kind of pull yourself down there and stay tight and manage those positions, that's where you'll know that you're kind of fighting for better range. Now, something that's happening for you, Jen, is you have a tendency to want to shift forward, and that's what we were talking about before. I'd actually, I'm gonna prefer that you stay a little bit back, and your chest might be cantilevered forward, and that's okay, as long as the back's still staying flat. We have some degree of maturity that comes with squatting more, and it doesn't mean like immature as a person, it just means you've spent less time squatting upright and squatting like this. And as we get more and more mobile, we can be more upright, more and more mature, but a lot of us are gonna start with this position that looks a little bit more like this, um, and if we try to shift forward, we tend to like shift out into the ball of the foot, and I wanna avoid that. So let's try a couple more, ready? And down, stay there. Yes, so much better, good. You're easy to teach. And stand. Narrow your stance like a quarter of an inch. There we go. Turn your toes out even more. Something for you to might maybe try, and this, this can happen for people, uh, I don't know, with tighter hip flexors and things that go on through there, is before you start squatting, think about twisting in, in, out, so letting the femur pull out this way. So basically you do this without moving your foot. So right now, twist, yeah, and then start your squat like that, and then descend down. Sometimes what'll happen if you've got tighter hip flexors in there is as you go to squat, it'll just kind of shove it back and it'll start pinching as you hit this bottom position and you won't have much range. So if you start with a little bit of a twist to give it that range, it'll help with that. Ready? Start with a twist and down. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that. Sit back in your heels more. Yeah, and stand. You're comfy in the other one where you shift forward. You've got such great ankle mobility. That's gonna be huge for you come later. Stay back. Ready, and down. And stand. Nice. You're also a little crooked. Your left one's coming forward, so pull that left side back just a little bit. Let's try it again. And down. Pull that left side back, there we go. That's, that's neutral, yeah. Come up a little higher for me, yep. And stand, awesome. Let's go again. And down. There we go. And stand. Cool, go ahead and relax. So the hands up, this whole thing, like I actually don't need the hands up. The hands are for a cue to get you to get your chest more upright. So when you pull your hands up, it tends to lift the chest, it tends to flatten out the back. You guys are actually looking really good through that portion of it, which is, I don't know, it's not surprising, but it's, it's great. It's like, I love seeing you do that. It's not always as easy as that for people. A lot of times people have a much harder time finding range and maintaining a good neutral spine. But the main thing that I'm looking at as you go down is making sure that this trunk doesn't end up tucking under through that. And you guys are all doing it, so I'm happy with that. You guys are all doing it at home too, I'm sure, as well. So do you have any questions on the basic air squat? No, are you, are you gonna good with that? Cool, I'm good with that too. We're now just gonna build on top of that. We're gonna use all these common themes. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna move to the front squat. So grab out your PVC pipe. Now, if you don't have a PVC pipe, and you're like, I haven't been plumbing any time recently, um, then go ahead and grab a broom. If you don't have a broom, I don't know, a mop? Like, but if you don't have a mop, like find something. But you know what you could do? You could take a belt. You could take a belt off, and it's not as ideal because it's not rigid. Find a stick, Sticks. if you have a wizard staff lying around. A large wooden spoon, maybe two of them together. A pair of nunchucks. Yeah, find something that's long enough to where you can go through there, but, but be creative. Uh, this, um, it's also a test of your creativity, not you guys. But yeah, we got a PVC pipe, that, that's gonna be ideal. This is mimicking a barbell as we move through it. So all of these things stay exactly the same. The only difference is now we have this external load which is relatively uncomfortable. Um, and we're gonna figure out how to hold that right now. So what we're gonna do is take it and hold it out front like yay. Cool, and put it right in the base of your throat. Yeah, smash your mic if you have one, good. More mic, put, smash it in there. Yeah, now take your other hand and straighten it and lift your hand up past eye level with a straight arm. Nice, now if you look right here on all these athletes, it's sitting right in this little notch and that notch in your shoulder, that's genetically designed to hold a barbell. Good, go ahead and relax. That's what it was made for. There's no other purpose for that notch when you lift your hand up other than to hold a barbell. So that's where we want the weight sitting. Now obviously you don't hold a front squat out like this, you actually hold it in your hands and that's gonna be harder or easier depending on our mobility through our shoulders, but we're gonna figure that out now. So go ahead and take a double overhand grip. 
Lift it up and put it kind of on your shoulders here. Now you're gonna actually roll it back in your fingertips and push your elbows up as high as you can get them. Whoop, put it right there. There we go. And then, hey, there it is, good. Nice, stay there. This is perfect. So her hands are just outside her body here. I love this. Awesome. Too swole, too swole. <laughs> Widen your grip up just a little bit. Good, now go ahead and relax for a sec. So these ladies both have good lat and shoulder mobility. They can push it all the way up. It looks awesome there. Um, he's a little bit tighter, so go ahead and bring it up. And this is not uncommon at all. This is actually pretty good mobility for a lot of us. Now when some weight actually sits on here, it's gonna be down here and push your elbows up. Elbows more, elbows more, elbows more. This is what it'll end up looking like with some weight on here. But for right now, he's just gonna have to hook his amazing beard on it. That's his only choice. So for right now, it's gonna feel a little awkward. It's a little harder to do if you've got tight shoulders but hook your chin on it and drive those elbows up. So put it up, drive those elbows as high as you can get them. I know it's a little uncomfortable in the throat. And go ahead and relax, don't pass out. The elbows up are similar to the hands going up. So as we're squatting like this with our just air, air squat, it, the hands go up, keeps the chest up. And when we're doing the front squat, the elbows go up and that's gonna prevent the bar from drifting forward. If the bar starts to drift forward, the tendency to lose that uh, neutral spine gets a lot higher. The other thing is when we're down in the bottom, if the elbow collides with the knee, there's a weak link in that chain. And the weak link is not the barbell and it's not your knee, it's your forearm and your wrist. So if you're lifting weight and your elbow hits your knee, chances are your wrist or your forearm will shatter rather than the barbell bending around that. So we wanna keep our elbows high. So go ahead and put it up on the shoulders. I've only seen it once. Elbows nice and high. Go ahead and relax. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> it is. It actually feels a little bit better when there's load on there, like I was showing with Mike. Like, put it up on, on your body for me. And if I put some pressure down here and then you push up, it kind of holds it on your shoulders rather than you pressing it into your own throat. So this is a little odd, but it's okay. If these guys can do it, you can do it. Right, Mike? I believe. Uh, you believe, that's good. I'm glad you believe. I believe in as well. So go ahead and bring it up. We were talking about like Harry Potter, right? You yeah. believe? Okay, elbows nice and high. Easter. Easter, yeah. And go ahead and relax. That elbows nice and high piece is what we're just gonna add to the squat. So everything we just did stays exactly the same. Same squat, hips go back and down, knees drive out, weight stays in the heels, get all the way down to the bottom, but now we're going like this. You don't need to make the face, but the elbows need to go. The elbows need to drive up really high. Okay, so bring it up. Get the elbows high. When I say down, go down. When I say up, come up. Get out to our squatting stances. Awesome. Yes. And down. That was up, that was up, that was up more. Yes, yeah, that's good, that's great. That was up higher, that was up higher. Push, 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 push. And stand. Yeah, so as you are down there, if you're down there and you're like, this feels great, you're not in the right position. So push those elbows up. Get to a relatively uncomfortable place for me. Um, I'm, the whole setting is uncomfortable, but let's even be more uncomfortable in our own skin. Go ahead and get it up. Elbows up nice and high, and down. Push those elbows up as high as we can get them. Yes, there we go, good adjustment. A Little deeper in your squat, a little bit more, a little bit more, Elbow, knees out harder, eyes forward, elbows higher, and up. Yeah, and as you stand up, higher. So they lead you out of the hole, which is hard. Let's try one or 2,000 more of these. Get up on our shoulders. Roll it back in the fingertips. Elbows high and down. Yes, good, good. And up. Yeah, okay, go ahead, relax, relax. Relax at home too. That was good. And I see you're fighting for it. I know, I can see in behind your eyes how uncomfortable this is for you. Just both physically and emotionally to have something just right up in your throat doing the thing, I, I get it. Um, as you do it more, of course it's new, um, but the more you do it, it does actually become a lot more comfortable. And the more you can kind of put it, set it on the shoulders and you get a little bit of weight in there. Uh, with the different kits that we have, oftentimes you don't even have a barbell. You just learn it with the barbell because it's the, the easiest thing to learn it with. Well, actually it's the hardest thing to learn it with, but it's the most uniform to learn it with. The things that we'll generally have are like dumbbells. So you pop them up on your shoulders so it's not sitting right in your throat, but the same general mechanics apply. Um, let's do a couple more, because I want to make sure we're working for it. Go ahead and get it up on our shoulders. Make sure we take a grip that's outside our shoulders, so we don't want our fingers being pinched by our body. There we go, good. Mike, can you widen your grip just a little? Ready? Elbows up nice and high. And down. Stay there, yeah, nice. 
Yeah. Keep driving those knees out. And up. Turn your toes out for me. Even more. Yep. Bring it up. And down. Yeah. And up. So go ahead and relax. This is actually a pretty fun example. You guys have three different varying levels of maturity in your squat. You've got a little bit longer legs and a little bit shorter torso, so you're a little bit more pitched forward in your position than, say, she is. She's got a little bit more even body positions as she's going down there, so you also have a looser ankle. Uh, I don't think you have quite the same years of running that she does. Um, so when you're down there in the bottom, the more ankle mobility that you have, the further forward this can travel, the easier it is to stay upright. And for you, it goes bunk and it stops, and it just there's nowhere else to go. So you're like, now what? So it, what's cool is that you can still see on camera, you're really good at maintaining the neutral spine. Like that's not rounding, it's, it's staying nice and rigid, which is a very realistic thing for a lot of people at home. It's like, yeah, I'm not gonna be upright and it's gonna be years for me to get upright in my squat, but I can still have a good sound squat of being fighting for this better position and being in that, that place. The one thing that you like to do is you like to take that narrower stance with a straighter foot, but it prevents you from getting the range there. So whereas shh, these two have a little bit more range, they could be a little bit wider, they could be a little bit narrower, you have like a, a quarter inch margin. Yeah, you have one spot that if you're outside that or inside that, it's like, I don't know. And that's, again, very realistic for being at home. Like, you might have this spot that you're like, this is just not it. This is just not it. This is just not, this, oh, there it is, right there. That's it, that's all I got. And if, I, if that is you, I suggest taking some chalk, putting it on the ground around your foot, and then just knowing that. So when you're learning, you can always step back into that and say, okay, this is, this is me for right now. And then as you get more mature in your squatting, you can kind of change that. You guys are looking good through the, the front squat. Let's do two more so I know it wasn't just a fluke. And <laughs> when I say down, go down. When I say up, come up. Get it on your body. Get out to that squatting stance. Get those elbows high. Ready, and down. Awesome. And up. Heck yeah. And down. And up. Nice, go ahead and relax. Sweet. We're done, you can throw the sticks off into the distance. No, we're not quite done. Um, that's awesome, you guys did fantastic through that. So that's the air squat and the front squat. Um, now we kind of get to the granddaddy of the squats, which is the overhead squat. And this is an odd movement. Um, it's an odd movement because it requires a ton of mobility, but also a ton of strength. And people usually lack in one of those areas. It's either they, they have a great range in their shoulders and their hips and their knees and their ankles, or they've got, they're really strong and they can like hold it overhead. And we kind of want both from you in the overhead squat. So what we're gonna do first with the overhead squat is find the grip. We're gonna take a nice wide grip, extra, extra wide. Wider than you think you need to go. If you're holding a mop, you're probably touching the mop heads. Now, I don't know why you have two heads on a mop but just the head on one side. The other side is off in the distance. We do a shoulder roll. So you're gonna pass up and over your head. Yep. And if you can't, then you're gonna widen your grip up. Yeah. And then go back through. This is also called a dislocate. So don't dislocate your shoulders. Elbow is nice and straight as we do it. And you should feel comfortable on these first ones where you're like, okay, this is good. I like this. And then you get to the spot where you're like, okay, I'm gonna narrow that up just a little bit. So narrow it up just a smidge, unless you can't in which case leave it right where you had it, and do another shoulder roll or a pass through, and then come back around, and then do it, narrow it up a little bit, and we go back around. So you might have found your spot already, and that's okay. If you found your spot, great. But for a lot of us, we're gonna be able to go narrower and narrower, and we're gonna find a spot that as we go through, it gets a little sticky, but it's not like super uncomfortable. It's just a little sticky. And maybe your lip snarls a little bit as you do it, but you, you can feel yourself kind of like wanting to manipulate the position a bit. Yeah, right there. That's good. Ooh, good mobility over there. Go ahead and leave it there. Now, some of us will be like so mobile in our shoulders that we'll just be like, is this what you want? And like hand to hand, I'm like, no, that's not what I want at all. Um, if that's you and you're at home and you're like, yeah, right here, this is what I got, then widened up to about six to eight inches over your head. That's what we're looking for. So put it up over your head. And if I were to go here, I'm looking for about six to eight inches. Yeah, right there. Now hold on to the bar. There we go. Don't narrow your grip. <laughs> Good. Widen your grip for me, Mike. Wider, 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 wider. Go ahead and come back down to the waist. The reason that we want to be able to pass through is for a safety. So when we're doing snatches, which we'll learn later, or overhead squats, if the bar is overhead and we need to get out from under it, it needs to be able to either go forward 
or backwards. So if it starts tilting backwards and you can't let it fall, then you'll have to dislocate both your shoulders to drop it behind you. It's crunchy and gross. We don't wanna do that. So let's go ahead and keep it to a place where we can drop it behind us and still be safe. And that's why we wanna do those shoulder rolls and find that good spot. Put it up overhead. And what I want us to do is put this right over our head to where if I were to cut, like, you know, let it drop straight down, half your body would flop on this side, half your body would flop on this side. So that's good, it's good, nice, awesome. Now from there, what I want us to do is take your elbow pit and face it towards the ceiling. Yep. And then from there, hold onto the bar. Get that pinky around it. There we go. <laughs> it's like you're drinking tea. Uh, and then from there, drive up and push into the sky. Good. Go ahead and relax for a sec. Um, this is a hard position for a lot of us to find, that elbow rotating, kind of figuring out where the shoulder is there. And the, we do it for a number of reasons, but mainly we want to make sure that the, we have as much musculature holding there, and we have the shoulder open in this position rather than turned in and rotated. So we want to stay open as we do this as much as we can. There will be a little shoulder movement as we go down. But let's, in order to find this position really easily, go ahead and go underhand for me. You guys can do this at home too. Put it up overhead and see where your shoulder is. That's the shoulder position that we're looking for. Now with your hand in this same shoulder position, turn your hands around. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. So that's your overhead shoulder position. Now, and if you ever need to readjust, you can go underhand to figure out where that is. Nice, widen your grip up just a little bit. Nice, good. Go ahead and relax and come back down to the waist. We're getting in and out of this. Stop adjusting your grip, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> These ladies are doing it great. And you keep adjusting your grip, Mike. Make sure that you can do a shoulder roll. Everybody at home, make sure you can do a shoulder roll. Everybody do it right now. See if you can. If you can't, widen your grip up. And then never move this grip. Keep it right there. <laughs> go ahead and pop it up overhead. There we go. Now take your elbow pit, face to the ceiling, and drive up. Awesome. Now if I were to come by and give you a good kick to the stomach, I should break my foot. You ready? Good, go ahead and relax. That's the bracing I want, essentially, is I want you to brace like you're about to be hit. So we have, like in Pilates, we've got like transverse abdominus bracing and pulling your belly button to your spine and pulling in through here. We're gonna try a little bit different bracing. Both are valuable. This one is like, I'm about to be hit, what do I do? And you go, ha! And you brace and you kind of push out against that. So if you need to, you can pat yourself on the stomach, but that's the bracing I'm looking for. So put it up overhead. It is a bit different though. Push up. Pull the bar forward for me, Mike. You're in a great position. Brace, go ahead and relax. Relax all, everything. We're gonna squat with that. Now, this is where things get a little tricky. All of this has to stay exactly the same. The number one thing I see people do when they do this movement for the first time is they put it overhead and then they're like, okay, it's here. And they just definitely don't wanna do the actual squat I just taught them. So they shoot their knees forward and they try to keep their chest up. Now this, this is not what we want. What we want to do is we want to brace and do the exact same squat we did before. Hips go back and down, knees push out, we're fighting for that good position, and it's just going to be a lot of pulling it back and pushing up into it to maintain, okay? So put it up. Pull that bar forward, Mike. Lock your elbows out. There we go. Brace and down. Yes, yes. All kinds of fun joy happening. And stand. Yeah, stand it up. Okay, so go ahead and relax. Now something that happened with a lot of these guys, and it probably happened at home too, is that as you went down, the bar wanted to go somewhere, especially if it was right over your head. Now, you know you've got a little bit of the pitch forward in the squat, so if she pitches forward, where does the bar go? It goes forward. But you can't hold a bar there. You can hold a PVC pipe there, but an actual load will never be able to be held forward. So what we have to do is we have to let the shoulder accommodate for that. And the shoulder, this is acceptable, but it's not ideal. Ideally, we'd be have a perfectly upright squat, but there's some range that the shoulder can do. So as we go down, we need to make sure the bar stays over the middle of our foot, so you'll have to pull that back to keep it over the middle of your foot. So if I ask you to pull back, that's because the bar is starting to drift forward, okay? Um, if you can't pull back, you need to widen up your grip more to accommodate you being able to pull back. Let's do it, put it up overhead, drive up into the bar, Grab the bar, Mike. <laughs> he was literally just holding it in his hand. Ready? Just lock out your elbows, Mike. And down. Awesome, great. Pull that bar back just a little. Whoa, that's good. You get to fall over, but only once. Even more, Jen. Pull back just a little bit more. There we go, good. Drive your knees out more. Yes! And stand. Yeah, that's good. So I guarantee you like 20 people at home just fell over because I, that, that's just, 
That's just the nature of this movement. There's so much thought that goes into it, where the bar is, the asking for the range from the shoulder, the amount of stability required. This is hard, so like, it's real. Thank you for, I mean, I told them to do that. I had them fall over so you guys could see them fall over and not feel alone. Thank you. Go ahead and put it up overhead. This is not easy, go slow. And down. Yeah, yeah, pull back just a little. I know, I know. And up. That's the best one you've done. Widen your grip up just a little. Even more, even more. Here we go. And down. Pull back just over your head just a little. Here we go. And up. Let's try one more. Ready? And down. Yeah. And up. Go ahead and relax. I see that shoulder wanting to come forward and go through there. You got the, are you feeling it at all? Oh, it's good. Awesome. So this is really hard. Period. Like this is a hard movement to do and this is with a stick. And then later we're going to be like, I want you to take a heavy bar and dynamically throw it overhead and catch here. Like that's why some of these things are so like barrier to entry, like hard to get into. We have to start here with the PVC pipe and struggle and fight through it and then eventually work our way to these more complex movements. The value in the more complex movements and the value in something like this is the fact that it is complex. What it's requiring from your body is so much greater than just doing an air squat that's valuable for you as you walk through the rest of life. And the complexity of the Olympic lifts when we get into snatch and clean and jerk, the, what it's required neurologically as well as physiologically is a higher demand than most things in life. But if we can start to coordinate and sync those things, it helps us with the things we want to do in life. And that's what a fitness program should do. And that's what we're trying to do with all the stuff that we do is basically make it so that as we walk through life, the things we do are easy. And when we go in and we go to train, we stress ourselves in ways, both psychologically and physically, that the rest of life is much easier. Whether it's picking up our kids and throwing them into a pool, or whether it's going on a massive hike, or whether it's playing water polo, whatever it is, we should have a training program that supports that. And that's why we do the movements that we do. That's why we choose these squats and these overhead squats and things that are not just like, we're gonna do hip blasts and squeeze our butt and do the ball. It's like, we're gonna do things that try to get us to a place to where we can live a better quality of life. And as silly as it sounds, an overhead squat does that in a very unique way. So you guys did fantastic. You guys did fantastic. Let's do a workout. Um, not with just that, but with some other stuff. So that's the squat, that's the front squat, the overhead squat. Did you have any questions on those three? No, you sure? I'm sure if you have any, they definitely have some at home. No, good. I'm glad you guys all at home have it. I'm glad these guys all have it here. You guys can take your PVC pipes or your mop and just put them back in your mop bucket or set it down here. We're now gonna do a little bit of a workout and this workout is gonna be combined directly with our assessment that we have in the, in the app there. So this is to figure out both what gear kit you have and to get you a little sense of uh, some training for the day. Um, the workout is gonna consist of one minute of push-ups, as many as you can do and we got a very strict standard for the push-up, and we'll go over the push-up right now. Then one minute of rest, as much rest as you can do in one minute. And then one minute of air squats. And the air squats are gonna be this air squat, the one that we learned earlier, and we've got some very strict standards for it. And there's a couple things that I want us to note as we go through this. One, relative intensity. This program is uh, a program that requires threshold training, basically pushing to your own threshold. And every day is gonna be slightly different depending on what day it is, but that threshold is gonna be relative to your own capacity. So you should not be pushing at the same pressure that I'm pushing at. You should be pushing at your own threshold. Now, it's important that you kinda of like figure out where that is, and where that tends to be is when you start to have mechanical breakdown. So we want you to first and foremost be moving well, hitting the range of motion standards, like we talked about here, this full range of motion for the squat, but then also once those are being hit and you're making sure it's all looking pretty, then start to pick up the pace a little bit, speed up a little bit. And that's gonna be faster or slower based off of our own previous fitness levels or where we're currently at or how much sleep we got the night before, or what we've eaten before this or what the stress level's like. Like there's a lot of stuff that factors into whether or not you can push hard, but that's always relative. I never want you looking at somebody else and being like, I need to be that person. You need to be pushing relative to your own capacity. And I'll help you with that in this session and I'll help you with that in the daily training too. Standards, 
Again, not really negotiable. It's not like, yeah, we can do half squats today. No, if you have like a steel hip or you've got a big injury we gotta talk about, yes, we can modify around to be like, okay, we're gonna do box squats where we're squatting down to a box and standing back up. Or we're gonna figure out a way to make the movement that you can actually do. And that's important, but we need to make sure we keep our standards and are always pushing to get those full standards. Um, standards in life are important in general. Just, I don't know why I'm giving so much life advice today. It doesn't seem like I set out to do this, but that's where we're going for it. Ego, you have to have a massive ego to, no, did you, <laughs> that you wanna leave your ego at the door. Like that when, when you do these kinds of programs, there's a certain level of vulnerability required to push yourself to these places, and both physically and emotionally. So you don't wanna be going into this being like, I need to be the best, or I need to be better than this person, or whatever it is. You, you wanna have these other stuff and try to, as much as possible, kinda leave your ego aside, and just kinda listen to the movements, listen to the coaching, and try to move through stuff. You only have what you've got and make sure you hold these other standards long before you're really pushing yourself. Lastly, fun. You have to have fun. This is unacceptable, but I'm here to tell you, unless you're a little weird, the fun doesn't happen during the training. Like when you're midway through the workout, you're not like, yeah, this is great. It's usually after the workout or as you're before the workout when you're learning or using the, the fitness that you have to go apply it to the rest of life and be like, oh, I wanna go kiteboarding today. And you go kiteboarding, you're like, that wasn't that bad. It was weird technique, but I had the capacity to do so. So yes, it's fun and I want you to have fun, but when you're in the middle of the workout, the intensity piece, sometimes, like, I, I, you guys know Maggie, I think, that we kind of have here. She's smiling the whole time. She's a unique one. She's special. I mean, you might be able to push through and do that, and if that's you, awesome at home, but that's not always gonna be the case. I'm gonna ask you to push a little bit here and there, okay? All right, so let's talk about a couple things. First, we have to go over the push-up. Let's learn the push-up. For right now, we're all just gonna come on down to the ground. Um, the standard for a push-up and the range of motion is that our chest, which is gonna be defined as about sternum line, uh, that's gonna touch the ground. So when you go down to the bottom, if you take your hands off the, gr the ground, you shouldn't fall any further. So if you get to the bottom of your push-up and you're like, here I am, and then I, I ask you to take and you drop, then you weren't at the bottom of your push-up. So we're gonna start first with just on our knees. So go on your knees, body is nice and planked out. We're just gonna go all the way down and touch our chest to the ground. Nice, again, take your hands off the ground to see if you're actually there. You are, all right, and press on back up. Now you don't need to take your hands off the ground, but I need you to get that far. So on your knee right here, same sort of deal, just go ahead and give me three push-ups, all the way down, all the way back up. And when you lock out at the top, just make sure your elbow fully locks out. Awesome. Sweet, go ahead and relax. That's a knee push-up, fully legit, and any single day will have these different levels that we have in them. So where you can pull back a push-up all the way to a knee push-up, you can even pull back further, to something like a box push-up, where you'd be on here, you'd elevate your feet, and you'd do a push-up down in the box and press back out. So, Every movement we have can be pulled back uh, uh, ability-wise. Next, we can try a plank push-up. And let's try a plank push-up down to a knee push-up up. So it'll be out like this, fully in a plank. We'll go all the way down, touch, put our knees on the ground, and then press back out. So see how that feels. Let's try three of those. You at home, same feel. Try lower yourself nice and slow. Yes, a little bit more difficult. Put your knees on the ground, press back up. Now these guys kind of all do it naturally, but I think not everyone does. Brace that stomach as much as possible when you're pressing back up, because believe it or not, there's a massive amount of ab work that goes into doing a push-up. Yeah. Awesome. So that's another way we can pull back a push-up. Now we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna try a full planked out push-up and see what happens. And you might go down to the bottom and go, and then just go nowhere. And that's okay, that's where a lot of us are. And if that's the case, just drop to your knees and do the knee push-up. Let's see if we can try three planked out push-ups all the way down, touch your chest, and lock out your elbow at the top. Yeah, good! And I love watching, watching you struggle through that, but you're fighting it. That's good. Awesome, go ahead and relax. Now if you're doing those three and you're like, whew, those three were difficult then that's not you for this one minute of push-ups. For the one minute of push-ups, I want you to pull back to a level where you can kind of plug through those and move relatively steady and consistent for about one minute. So what version of push-up do you want to do? Knee push-up, fantastic. What version of push-up? Knee, knee push-up, fantastic. I'm gonna do the plank. Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now the big thing is the standard is gonna be important. You're gonna to touch your chest to the ground, you're gonna lock your elbow out of the top. Now you don't need to go as slow as we just did there. To give you a frame of reference, I've seen in one minute about 50 push-ups done. 
that's about a push up a second. It's very fast. So I want you to be moving quick, as quick as you can while maintaining those standards, okay? Because that's gonna kind of set you up for what you're able to do for this, the buying your gear kit. So make sure you're going fast in that time. Don't just down it up, pick the pace up at, to your own relative ability. So let's try that right now. Let's see what happens when we do five fast push-ups. At your own pace, go, five fast push-ups. Oh, you gotta touch the chest to the ground. Oh, ha ha, there we go. Nice. Awesome. Missed that first one. That was good, that was a perfect example for it. So on the very first one for Jen, um, she went down and she didn't quite hit the bottom. And then she pressed back out and she was like, oh, I can't count that one, because I have standards. And that was that range of motion there. But then at, every single one after that, and it's, it's cool, like occasionally we'll go to do something, it doesn't quite go there, and we'll be like, ah, I know that wasn't it. That felt way too easy, or that, that wasn't quite there. And then you kind of adjust those standards you go. And you might, might mean you move a little slower, but that's okay. Five fast push-ups felt pretty good? No. <laughs> Now, just shoulder position-wise, with the push-up, the most ideal position is gonna be about a 45 away from the body. Depending on our strength and what we have in our body, sometimes people are more tricep-driven, so they'll have their elbows in a little bit more. Sometimes people cock way out. And this kind of internally rotates the shoulder, but try to avoid going too far out this way. Try to be more of that 45 or a little bit tighter to the body. But you can adjust as you go through. You'll see what happens as, as we go through that. Stand up. Now, as for the rest position, you can rest however you wish. It can be classic rest hand here, on the back, do what you want. Like you can rest in whatever position that you want to rest. This is all a great rest position as you go through this. Lastly, we have the air squat. Uh, you guys know how to air squat, but let's get out to your squatting stance. I haven't let you do any in a row. So what I want to see now is three air squats in a row. The standards are your hip goes below your knee. You stand all the way up to where you're standing all the way up. If you're bent over, that's not you standing all the way up. So I just want you to get to the top, and you can give a little butt squeeze at the top. Same there. So go all the way down, stand all the way up, give a little butt squeeze, yeah. Is there any wrong position for the arms? No. So just what's comfortable? Yeah, okay. that's great. So is there any wrong position for the arms? Like, there's not. You can do whatever you wish with the arms. The easy thing is to use them for balance. So as you go in there, some people get really freaky with it and they're like, I'm gonna throw them up and I've got the kip in the air squat. And I, I laugh at those people, but you can do that. Like you can do whatever you wish. No wrong position for the arms. I wanna see three air squats. We all move at different speeds, but at a relatively quick clip. Let's see what we got. And go. Three air squats, yeah, down and up. Nice. That was great. I can hear you going over the points of performance in your head. Push my knees out, sit back in my heels, keep my chest up, that's great. It was too slow though. So what I'm gonna ask for now on this next one is gonna be three faster air squats. So that was great, you guys moved really well. A little bit quicker this time. Cause you've only got a minute to do. So let's give me three slightly quicker air squats hitting those same standards. And go. Yeah, keep pushing those knees out every time. Yes. Nice, cool, go ahead and relax. That's more of the pace that I'm looking for. Um, and how do I breathe? Just breathe, make sure you breathe. Like they're, they're, breathing's really important and getting oxygen in is really important. When we're lifting really, really heavy loads in front squats and overhead squats, there's using the internal uh, support from the diaphragm to brace against that and take a big breath in and basically you're not breathing while you're moving. In the case of moving a bunch of air squats in a minute, just get oxygen where you can. Just don't, don't hold your breath. If you went, and did a minute of air squats, your chances of passing out are pretty high. So, so try to be breathing as you're moving there, okay? Do you have any questions on this? Questions on the standards for the push-up? Questions on the standards for the rest? Questions on the standards for the air squat? You're gonna have to keep track of your own numbers. Um, so I'm gonna get your little chalkboard out. If you guys wanna grab your little phone there, you can. So what you're gonna do is this first minute, I'm gonna get my timer going there in just a second. I'll be right here with you, I'll be holding those standards. We're gonna do a minute worth of push-ups, as many as you can do, and I, I urge you to go ham, which is hard. And, yeah, I don't know what else I can say for that, but let's do this, and hard as mustard, okay? <laughs> We're gonna go hard as mustard on this next one. At home, same sort of deal. We'll put that timer up on the screen. Remember, you're gonna use this for your onboarding in the actual app, so, Let's utilize it well. Here we go, we got our standard set. Your, your first minute is gonna start in three, two, one, go. 
All the way down there for me, Jen. Yeah, you might miss one. That's okay. Hit that range every time, and you're gonna eventually get to a point where you're like, I can't do anymore. And then you just shake out your arms and try to go for another one. Awesome, keep going. Every time, touch that chest to the ground. All the way down, all the way up, good. Don't forget to count, though. You at home, don't forget to count. Same sort of deal. Stay moving through it. We're at about 30 seconds in. You can rest if you need to, that's okay. But you just have that time, one, that only one min minute to move through it. Nice. Stay moving, stay breathing. 20 more seconds. <laughs> rest for a sec, Michael. Don't, don't keep planking. Shake out your arms. You can, you can get another one in there, come on. 10 more seconds. Or maybe you can't get another one in there. I mean, it was there. I saw it. And three, two, one, and rest. Okay, right down to your chalkboard. How many you get? 22, that's awesome. 22. Oh, Jens, you are. Okay, I guess it's just a race to see who gets the most air squats. That's great. Uh, I mean, not that it's competition. It's just you versus yourself. It's just you versus yourself. Uh, what'd you get? 20. That was rad. Good job. What'd you get? Good. Glad you got that too. Good call. All right, so we now have a minute worth of air squats. Shake out your arms, shake out your legs. <sighs> Get a couple breaths in there. This first one might be a little, a little slow, and then you start speeding it up, and then you're just moving through, and you're like, yeah, I got this. Remember, all the way down, all the way up. 20 more seconds of rest. I feel like this is too much rest. I feel like we should cut the rest in half. That's it, we're, we're changing the whole program. That was great, you guys did awesome on those push-ups. I like your first one, fine in range. And there it was. But you really have to hit the ground. You really have to hit the ground. So yeah, I know. <laughs> Three, two, one, and go. Flopping would be not what I'd go for. We'll talk about that in a second, but go, keep going. Yes, oh, look at that speed. Nice on the knees, good job. Fight for those positions. You guys are doing a great job of staying balanced about the foot. Don't forget to count, keep moving through your 15 seconds in. You go quicker, can't you, Mikey? There we go. Keep moving through. You're 30 seconds in. This is all we're doing today for the workout, so stay moving faster. Come on. Looks really good. 20 more seconds. Stay moving. Get back in those heels every time. Keep driving those knees out. Keep hitting that range. Squeeze the butt at the top. 10 more seconds. You got a mic. In. Three, two, one, and rest. Count it. 33? 34. 34! Oh, you just waited for her to say it. I know you did. That was legit, though. 32. 32. Nice, you guys. Oh, all in a row. Don't forget to write it down. Write it down there. Awesome. Write it down at home. Okay, we're doing five more rounds. No, you're done. You're done. Like that. That's it. No. I'm gonna. It's the classic trainer joke of like, now it's ten more rounds. No, that's it. That's all we got for the day. So that's that's we're done in terms of our movement, in terms of our everything. We're going there. We need to remember that number because that number, these two numbers, we're gonna put into the app, and we're gonna. You guys are gonna do it in a second too. Uh, we're gonna show you how to do that in a whole separate section of this video where we'll show you how to log in and get that uh, onboarding. Um, you guys are now gonna get his homework where you, when you go through the onboarding process, you'll plug that whole thing in so it shows you what gear kit you're gonna get. That was awesome. So now let's talk about a few things here. You guys did really good. That was a two minute workout essentially. So you had one minute on front end, <laughs> one minute on the back end. And, and right now you're breathing pretty hard. And, and that intensity that you all had was totally relative to your own ability. That was awesome. You guys, relative ability was similar across that, that little time frame. But as we went, we go through all these movements, as we go through these different workouts, we're gonna have different places where we're maybe a little bit better or maybe a little bit worse or maybe need some more practice or maybe we're lifting heavier loads or lighter loads or having trouble with movement. But there's all kinds of stuff in any given day to where we're gonna kinda try to push our own relative intensity levels. And by doing so, we end up getting better. We stress ourselves in different ways, and believe it or not, the way the human body responds to stress is given enough time to recover as it gets better, it gets stronger. So like that wasn't necessarily easy, 
but it was something that was fun. In post-workout, you were laughing, you were doing the things, and these are the things that we try to do with our daily training. It's always gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna have different movements. There's always a sense of learning, and learning is really important. The second we're not learning, then we're kind of decaying as we do through stuff. But I'm gonna try to keep it as fun as I can through any of the sessions that we have at home, through any of the sessions we have here, and the next few sessions we'll build some of the more basic foundation pieces, like pressing overhead, pulling from the ground, things like that. Um, any questions from that? Okay, well your homework is then to log that in the app. Thank you guys all for getting through this incredibly normal scenario with all these lights. Um, you guys have some homework to go. Log that onboarding and make sure you have that all in there. Good luck with that and we will see you next time. All right, you just got done with your very first on-ramp class, fantastic. Now let's log our score together. So you go here in the app, you're gonna see the workout for the day. Uh, you're going to go down to the section that has the levels next to the movement. So we'll go in the push-ups. You'll select the little carrot there. There'll be a drop down and you have two different options. You have the one minute max push-ups in the planked out position or the one minute max knee push-ups. Either one, whatever you did, select that option. Whoop, and you click it there and then it'll give you whatever level is for that. Go down to the air squats, do the same thing. Select the level that you chose for that. Then you go down to workout. So log workout, select that. Now you're gonna come up here and you've got the total number of reps that you did is what you're going to be logging there. So you have to add the number of push-ups you did to the number of squats that you did. I did 20 push-ups and then I did 30 squats. So my total would be 50. So I'm gonna put 50 in there. Now in my journal notes, I'm actually gonna take the opportunity to write how many push-ups I got, as well as how many squats I got, so I know what the amounts were there. Now this is optional, you don't have to do this, but it's something you can do any given day. And I'm gonna say, I got 20 push and 30 squats. Awesome, and then to the public, I'm gonna say this comment, it's gonna be on my little score there, that was awesome with the emoji with the sunglasses, because that's how cool I feel. Uh, it changed my awesome just to that emoji, but you know what, that was smiley face sunglasses, I'll let people decipher that. I'm gonna hit done, and then I'm gonna hit save workout. Boom, that then throws me on the leaderboard, and I'm all logged for the day. Easy as that, any given day follows almost the exact same process. That was fantastic. Congratulations on finishing day one, good luck on day two.